Welcome to the Chasing Dreams podcast. Today, I have Nafisha, and we're here to talk about the power of inspiration. Yes. So, Ephesians 4.29 states, do not let it, any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Whew, that's a word by itself. By okay? itself, right? <laughs> Woo, I ain't even got to say no more, okay? <laughs> um, right? Only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Um, that it may be- benefit those who listen. When stumbling across that scripture, Nafisha had no idea what God was placing on her heart, but she knew it was going to be something big. She is a blogger, an inspirational speaker, a founder, CEO of Built Her Up, which is a Christian lifestyle blog designed to empower, encourage, and support women through inspirational and spiritual content while strengthening their relationship with God. In 2017, after leaving an abusive relationship and battling with years of depression, Nafisha contemplated suicide, but it was in her darkest hour that God showed her another way. She says that one of the hardest things she's ever had to do in life was surrender everything over to God. We are determined to be independent and not rely on anyone but it was when she was at her lowest point, she learned to ask for his help without feeling ashamed. Um, y'all, her bio is a little long. <laughs> oh, say, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Uh, her mission. I'm going I'm to end y'all with the mission statement, okay? <laughs> We're going to get to the yeah. mission. <laughs> the statement is, through Built Her Up, she will build to encourage women in God's truth, will build to support women through spiritual and inspirational content, and will build to empower women to be the women of God that he has destined them to be. Welcome to the podcast, love. Hi. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure, and I am so excited. Absolutely. So one thing that I did want to address um, with the scripture that you had to share, um, Ephesians 4.29, one thing that I think is so important about that is a lot of times people get caught up in the, but it's the truth. I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> and <laughs> just because it's an accurate statement does not mean it needs to be said, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. And, I, true. I, and I am I used to be that person. I used to be like, uh, uh-uh. well, I'm telling you like it is, and blah blah, blah. Mm. And I had to I had to put it on my screensaver where it was like, before you speak, let your words pass through three gates. Is it true? Is it kind? And is it necessary? There and I put on my screensaver to remind myself, like, before I speak, before I open my mouth, true is not good enough. You can say the truth and still be kind mm-hmm. and only share yes. what's necessary because that necessary yes. part avoids, avoids you being overcritical for no reason at all. Definitely. For no reason at all. So I appreciate you finding that scripture for me because now I can be like, ah, that scripture. Yes, you got, you got proof and you got backup. And definitely and to piggyback off of what you said, it has to be beneficial for the person that is listening. A lot of people will stumble across something, like you said, like it's true, you know, like was it appropriate? And and it it could be true. It could be appropriate statement. However, in that moment that the person is hearing that statement, was it beneficial to them? It might have been something that you said that was very true and that person might have not needed to hear that at that moment. You know, it could have been, you could have said something that broke them or sent them into a deeper depression. Like, you just have to be careful of the words that you say that come out of your mouth because they are, like, they're very different. So, you just have to be mindful of that. Is it benefiting those that listen? So, I can be telling you something that's very truthful and very honest, but if I'm not giving you that support behind what my truth is, like, you know, that benefit to help you or to take you to that next point, it's like... Don't say nothing. Don't open your mouth. Because I can tell you the truth all day, but am I going to help you with the truth that I'm giving you? Am I giving you some some feedback or some knowledge to help you, you know, 
strengthen that situation or to help you get over that situation? You know, because some people like to talk just because they like to hear themselves talk. So, yes, you just have to make sure that it's, it's beneficial, definitely. For sure. And with that, folks, we can go ahead and wrap up the conversation. <laughs> We're good to go. <laughs> And that's a wrap. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, so I like to start off every conversation by asking, what is the dream? See, uh, that's a good question. And it's a, it's a, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know the, I don't know the full dream. I just see little snippets of it. Mm-hmm. Like, so I don't know like the full the fullness of what I stumbled across like I know what I, I want is to be an inspirational speaker um Sarah Jake is somebody that I idolize um her woman evolve conferences are amazing so my vision okay. is to have build her up grow to that point okay just to empower women strengthen them bring them together and to back everything that we go through with God's truth. And I just want to be able to do that on a platform where I'm just touching everyone. Like nobody is off limits, color, race, background. Like, you know, we are women and we are all God's children. So that's the dream. Yes. Um, now, now if that's how God wants me to end up, I'm not for sure, but that's what I'm striving for. I just want to be able to, make somebody's life different in any way I can. Like, you know, um, cause I've been through a lot and I experienced so much that it was very hard for me to, you know, open up to people because you didn't want to feel judged or you didn't want to feel like somebody was looking down at you. But in those moments is when I found that it was other people just like me and that they were just waiting to hear my story. So they were, able to you know have the courage to speak out or Mm -hmm. to just feel better for that day um so that's the dream I just want to you know I want to get to that platform because you know we got to have a goal God said write the vision make it plain so the vision is out there I put it out there yeah but the dream is to just make somebody's life better because I know what it felt to be like you know put push down and put down and I, I don't want anyone to feel that way Mm-hmm. And it's really funny. I a while ago heard someone say, like, God will either give you a vision of the end result or he'll show you the steps to get there. Never both. So never both. Like, or the in between. Yeah. So it sounds like you got the steps, but not the end vision. Um, and, and I definitely understand that because I've had the opposite. So like God has shown me where I'm going. And I always knew exactly where I where I was going, but my frustration was like, "Well, how am I supposed to get there?" <laughs> <laughs> and in the explanation that that person gave, they were like, "If you knew each step to take and the end result, you wouldn't need him." Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you want so the other, and I'm sure it's based on what we need. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he gives you one or the other because it requires him. Exactly. Right. Like, you're absolutely right. Because when I had the dream of where, because literally I had this dream where I was standing on a, a platform and it was, a, the audience was so huge, I could not count how many seats was there. So that's the dream that I had. And I was like, that, excuse my language, that shit scared the shit out of me. I was like, whoa. That's how you know. I ain't up for this. <laughs> That's how I was you... like, I ain't signed up for this. This ain't what I was this ain't what I was thinking about. I thought I was gonna have a little blog, you know, go speak at a couple of events and stuff and call it a day. No, when I had that dream, I was like, Oh, oh, so I I I can do this. Like this this is this is real. Like I, I got work to do. So literally everything that I went through. And then beginning parts of my life and all of the, you know, the abusive relationships and, you know, being let down, all that stuff played the part in this victory right here, being in business for three years. So now I can just keep going, keep involving, you know, keep sharing my story. And it's only going to get better because then when I get to that platform, like I have, 
I have a message. I, I have a story. Mm-hmm. I have a journey. Yeah. And I can show somebody how I got there because I okay. started right, right here, you know, in my in my apartment, on my little dining room table with my computer. So, yeah. yeah. And fear is a confirmation that that's what you're supposed to be doing. It really is. I, 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 I can agree to that. I can agree to that. Because sometimes, you know, we literally, God gives us, like, ways and show us exactly what we were supposed to be doing. But in that moment or that season, you might not realize what it was. Mm-hmm. So I was always that friend that talk your ear off. Okay? Mm-hmm. I knew all the tea. I knew everything that was going on. I was the most talkative in high school. You know, all of that. But but when I became an adult and I started to go through life like that bubbly personality, you will only get if you knew me. So if a stranger walked up to me, it was just like, oh, you know, she's just like, she's quiet, you know, she's shy. Mm-hmm. But then once you got to know me, you got to see who I really was. So the fact that I started off just being this bubbly, bright person, you know, talk a lot, whatever, whatever. I didn't know this was God. Like, you know, yeah, you're going to be using that mouth. Yeah, yeah, the breadcrumb. Years to come. <laughs> For sure. So, when did you realize the dream, and how has it changed over the years? Um. So after therapy, um, when my therapist told me to go deeper, and I stumbled across that scripture in Ephesians, um, at that moment I knew that God needed me to do something, and I I thought it was just sharing my story. Um, so I created the T-shirts as a way. You know, since I really don't like talking in front of people, um, I can say like, oh, that's a nice shirt. Yeah, well, I stumbled with my blog. And then I can share, I can tell my story to them. And then that's that. So mm-hmm. job is done. Yeah. And, but then when I had my first event, one of my friends, you know, she was like, I want you to come to tell you, sell your shirts. And then I want you to tell your story. And I'm like, what? what? I'm like, oh, man, I thought this was like a one-time thing. So I actually told the story and then a few people there were like touched by what I was saying and they wanted to hear more. But I was still like, uh, I don't know what this is. And then as I kept doing more and more events and selling my t-shirts and talking to more and more people, every person that w- will reach out to me and talk to me was like, you have a gift. You haven't tapped into it yet. You have a gift. You haven't tapped into it. And I just didn't understand what that meant. And then I had that dream. And then the first thing I did was text my pastor, like, like this is this is what I just dreamt. And I don't know what this is. I get these weird ideas about stuff I want to speak about and stuff. And he like, you have a calling on your life. And when yeah. you're ready to like tap into it and not be afraid and get out of the way, I promise you, it's just gonna get easier. And literally, I just during this quarantine was able to just take chances and take risks. Like I just jump out the video, jump out the window and make a video where before it would take me a hundred takes. I would delete all the videos and end up posting up. Like when now it's just like, you know, just be yourself. Just show the people who you are. I mean, they're either going to like it or they're not. But the people that you need to affect, they will receive it and they will get it and they will understand. And once I switch my mindset to just focus on the people that are already here instead of trying to get new ones, like mm-hmm. let me just tap into and pour into the audience that I already do have. Exactly, exactly. Because, you know, because they're here with me. They've been with me shooting in the gym. So they, they know where I came from and how I got here. Now the people that come along, that's great. But cherish what you have right now. Because when God is ready to take me higher, then the more they going to come. Because he showed that. It was just me and my little blog. And I shared it on Facebook. And then next thing you know, it's like, oh, yeah, not Fisa. Oh, yeah, not Fisa. She's speaking. She this. And I'm like, wait, what? Oh, I just got a little blog. Like, y'all doing too much. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. Like, y'all doing too much now. Yeah, <laughs> but no, it was like people people saw saw that in me, so I just had to start seeing it in myself. And then once I start believing what I what I say and when I tell people and pour into people, it, it just became much easier. So I know it was more out there for me, but I just gotta just keep 
pushing forward and just, you know, just believing in myself. Yes. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I know you have, you know, years of history with yourself, but give us a little snippet who you are personally, professionally, as a business owner. Like, just wrap it up for us. Who are you? Who is um, Who is Nafisa? Well, Nafisa is an inspirational speaker. She is a Sagittarius. She has a great smile. <laughs> she has a big heart and a great sense of humor. And she just loves serving like I'm a servant at first I love to assist and help anybody in any way I can um in my business you know fill her up I inspire women to learn to be confident in who they are and who God made them to be um but with me developing that and getting to know other women and growing I also started uh I don't know what you would call it I, I, because I create starter websites for small businesses. Um, mm-hmm. a, a lot of people are not tech savvy, mm-hmm. so they might not, you know, you know, they don't have the time to sit and try to figure it out, but it's actually something that I love to do and I know how to do it. So I just did it for a couple of people and stumbled, you know, stumbled across that. Oh. So I'm, I'm doing that now and I'm just learning and growing in my faith and I'm just learning to be, you know, confident in who I am and I'm just, I'm just here to, you know, to continue to serve and to do whatever I can to just make somebody's day a little brighter. Yes, yes, yes. So tell us about your business and how has Build to Rep grown over time? Well, um, so Build Her Up started off as as a blog, you know, in therapy, my a therapist suggested that you know, before I was able to actually tell my testimony, she wanted me to write it down. So mm-hmm. after I wrote it down, I got real raw with it. Like, you know, just, you know, things that I never thought I would have to repeat again. <laughs> and then she told me to share it with somebody. So once I shared it and I saw that a lot of people that I looked up to and admire were going through some of the similar things that I was going through, I was like, wow, like, um, I'm on to something. So... In that moment, it was just a blog with me, you know, communicating with other women and just showing my story. But I didn't want it to always feel like they're just hearing me because I'm not the only woman that's going through stuff. So I sometimes I would have guest bloggers on the site and they would kind of speak about their area of expertise and how it can, you know, build up another woman. Um, well, now it's, a, you know, it's growing into, you know, a little community. And I call my readers, my gems, because as women, we're taught to be tough Mm. and have a hard exterior, but inside we're, you know, we're precious and, you know, we're unique. And we literally have all of the tools that we need to be the people that God needs us to be, but we just need somebody to help us shine bright. So Mm. that's why I call my followers my gems. And and there over the years, you know, it just started when we just, you know, just blogging and working on Facebook and Instagram. But now I'm being able to work with on different platforms, such as, you know, me and you are in Work University, where I'm actually networking with other women entrepreneurs from all different types of backgrounds. I've been doing a lot of Christian conferences where I'm meeting a lot of different other women that's kind of in my field. So that's great. And if I look at where I was back in 2017 when I started out to the person I am now, I'm very proud of my growth because sometimes when I have these um, interviews or these conversations and then I look back on it, I don't recognize the person that I'm listening to. Yes. I haven't, I'm like, I wasn't always that person. Like I was, you know, kind of shy and was just um, very timid. And I was unable to really express myself. So the fact that I can do that now, it's like, I'm just so proud of the growth, how I've grown as a person through my business. Okay. It's it's really a blessing. I love it. I love it. So with you um, hitting the three-year mark, like what is the number one secret to your success? Hmm. The number one secret to my success (laughs) Hmm. Well, I won't say it's a, 
I won't I won't call it a secret, but the the secret to my success is I look at women that's in my circles of networks that I've reached out to, and I look at them as as inspiration. So they literally, I have like I have started my business, you know, three years ago, and it's women that I look to that have started their business maybe two years ago or even one year, and they have surpassed where. You know where I where I feel like I should be at. Like I'm like I'm looking at them like oh my god I wish I was there. I wish I had X amount of Z followers or I'm doing these type of events and this type of events. It's, but I needed to go through my situation to build up my my brand for myself. But I look at them as inspiration because it keeps me going because I, I I'm watching them grow. Just like I'm growing my brand, I'm watching these women grow and I'm watching things that they're doing. And I'm like, that's not out of my reach. Like, yeah. I can do that too. So literally, I'm like, oh, if it's creating an ebook or a course, I can do that. I can do that. So yeah. <laughs> I can do that. So it literally makes me push myself to go that extra mile. And that's my success. Like when I see one of my inspirations do something i'm like i can definitely do that if it's for my brand you know it'll flow if not it's something that i try but that keeps me going so that's my secret taking chances taking risks and just believing in yourself and just know that the person that's next to you they can hit a hundred thousand followers they can hit a hundred thousand in sales they can sell out events and you can do the same thing yes yes so what final thoughts do you have for the audience Um, I just want the audience to know that it is nothing too hard for God. Mm. Like if it's a passion, it's something that's tugging at your heart. If it's something that you really, really want to do, you eat, dream, you can't live without it. You feel like it's something that you just need to do. Just do it because it's nothing too hard for him. I promise you when I was depressed and suicidal and I, I you know didn't want to live anymore because life was just hard that what that was just that wasn't nothing compared to where he's trying to take me because with new levels come new devils so in that season of my life I had to deal with those devils and I was able to get through them and that just showed me that was nothing too hard for God and then as I keep growing and I you know, hit my next level, and I hit my next level, I'm going to experience more things. But he's going to always be there with me because he was there with me in my darkest moment when I was mm. at my rock bottom and I had nothing else. I had no choice but to say I need help. And once I did that and I got out of my own way and I let him just do what he do, things will fall into place. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not going to be roses exactly on your journey but you're not gonna be able to be some is that it's gonna be some cracks some bumps and some steeps and some hills and mountains you gotta climb get over go around but you gotta do it but at the end of that next season it's gonna be a pot of gold and it's just there to take you to your next level because that vision that you have in your heart god can make it come but you just got to stand out of your way and just let him have control. They'll do your work. They'll, you know, stay encouraged, stay prayed up. But just allow him to just work. Just allow him to be in your space. Just allow him to guide you. Because I'm telling you, it makes the world, it makes a difference. Absolutely. You have dropped so many gems today. <laughs> where, where can people find you so they can, they can continue this process? Well, you can head over to my website. It's www.buildherup.org. You can follow me on Instagram at buildherupllc. And you can also follow me on Facebook at buildherupllc as well. Every day, um, you know, every week, I'm trying to create a great schedule. But I've, um, I submit some awesome content for you to keep you encouraged. My blog, I try to stay updated. Um, with different things as much as possible but everything that I put out there is just to encourage you to empower you and to inspire you and to always let you know that confident women don't hate we build her up 
Yes. Thank you so much for being thank a you. part. Yes. Thank you for being a part of the Chasing Dreams podcast. Woo! Awesome. Make sure y'all follow her. Get a tea. You know, like confident women don't hate. Okay. No. <laughs> Hello. Thank you.